So hello everyone. Um, we're going to wait for a couple of seconds so everybody can join um, the webinar. And thank you all for being here to attend. And um, yes, so maybe we can already start with a few presentation. So thank you for being here for the tips on submitting a successful poster abstract webinar uh, with um, our colleague uh, Mario Keefe which is our research project advisor, and myself, Lauriane Nalikos-Rochian, Ethics Scientific Program Coordinator. So as you may know, this web webinar will be recorded and presents also on the website. If you have any question, please answer, please put them on the Q&A uh, section below, and we will answer it at the end of this presentation. So we are gonna start and uh, first I'm going to present you a little bit about the uh, Congress and mainly the theme of this 13th Congress, which is personalized pain management. So why this, um, <clears throat> sorry, I was a bit sick, so mind me if I cough a little. So why personalized pain management? Because there's an increased evidence that personalized pain management is required to fit individual aspects of each patient with chronic pain. Individualized pain management must consider the prediction of a certain response to treatment and decision making related to the prevention of pain. With EFIC 2023, we have to analyze recent development in this area from pain research to pain management, from existing knowledge to pressing questions, and from controversies to clear cut evidence. And three main categories will be represented among our abstracts, which are basic and preclinical research, translational and clinical research. Your abstract will be grouped by subcategories and topics. And the key topics for the abstract are pain syndrome, basic in pain, diagnosis and measurement in pain, and pain therapy. You have a lot of, uh, sub of subtopics within this topic that you can find our, on our website. So first of all, let's start with the basic. What is an abstract? Your abstract is a summary of what you will be presenting on your poster. By reading your abstract, we should be able to understand the following, which is the subject and general background of your research, the method used to answer your scientific question, the preliminary results if they're available, and a conclusion slash discussion for your research. And we receive a few questions such as, what is the difference between the content of the abstract and the poster? Well, your abstract is a glimpse of your poster. It's it's the advertisement and your poster is the final product with all of your results. And methodological posters are also accepted but they need to fall into the ethic scientific topics of interest and the Congress theme. A few important guidelines and all this information you can find again on the website and also submit your poster. And a couple of key points are that your abstract should be submitted in English first with a suitable uh, level of English for publication because they will be all collected and presented in an abstract book. You will need to prepare your author information in advance. And um, of course, there's a couple of technical limitations such as um, word limits, and abstract body limits, this, um, the format of the image, and uh, of course, all submission need to be submitted through our online portal only. We will not accept anything sent to us by email. And the first, the deadline for the abstracts is Wednesday, 4th January, 2023. Once we receive all the abstracts, they will be reviewed by the scientific program committee and notification regarding the status of your abstract will be sent by mid-March. To be completely part of the program, we will only accept the final uh, <clears throat> people that has been fully registered to the Congress. And the, Congress, the um, sorry, <coughs> sorry for that again. And of course, we request all authors to be present on site to present their poster presentation and the registration payment needs to be set by Friday, 30 June, 2023. And for people who would maybe request some financial aid, we had something put in place at EFIC, and uh, we tried to uh, provide aid for applicants from low resources and currency res restricted countries. <coughs> so, so 
even if uh, EFIC is an European um, institution, applicants from outside of Europe will also be considered. And the call for financial aid is already open if you want to submit something. And of course, candidate presenting the poster will be highly ranked. And the deadline for this um, for the submission, sorry, for the financial aid will be 31 of January. So I highly encourage you to start to look at this, uh, at this uh, form. And in the end, of course, why submit an abstract to FA2023? Well, for a lot of reasons. First, to present your research in a dedicated post session, to qualify for guided post work, to have it, to qualify for best abstract prize, to participate in poster networking during our happy hours and with welcome reception, to be included in the EFIC 2023 abstract book, to receive a certificate for poster presentation, and of course, our poster will have a dedicated area for time and time for your presentation. Hi everyone. So I'm just going to talk through some top tips to submit a successful abstract. So first of all, to focus on your primary aim or objective of the study. So, you know, you have a limited work count, you might have, you know, a number of, of, of study aims and objectives, but do focus on the, the primary one. That's the most important uh, for your abstract. The secondly, so often people think the results are the most important part of an abstract, but really it's the methods. Uh, good methods is equal to a good study. So really be clear on the methods you've used. So the study design, whether you're, if you, for example, if your research aim is to examine the effectiveness of an intervention, we then expect to see a study design that would, would match that uh, research question and so on. Explain the population. So is it is it humans? Is it patients with back pain? Is it animals? And so on. Uh, sample size uh, where relevant. Um, what exposures are you examining? What interventions? What comparators? Again, where relevant, it depends on your study. Main, main or your primary outcome measures and your method of analysis. So all of these things are crucial for a person to then look at your results and see, can we actually believe those results? Because we need to know if the, if the method is the right way of tackling that research question. Present the main findings. So <clears throat> what I mean here is it can be tempting sometimes in an abstract to maybe present the more attractive or positive findings. But we really we want to know about the findings that reflect your primary aim or objective or your primary um, outcome measure. And if this is a quantitative study, do try and provide numbers. So, for example, if it's uh, investigating the effectiveness of an intervention, it's probably not enough to just say the intervention A was more effective than intervention B. Try to provide some percentages, confidence intervals, significance, uh, p-values, mean standard deviations, whatever data you have, try and put in those quanti uh, uh, quantitative numbers. Again, if there's, depending on the study, be really clear on things like participation rates, retention rates, loss to follow-up, because that can really affect um, uh, the, the results and is important for us to know. And focusing your primary outcome. But of course, if you have word count left, you can present your secondary outcomes as well. Conclusion. So this is about keeping your conclusions focused on your study. So often people can present the results, but then they can overgeneralize or overinterpret the findings of their study and apply it um, more broadly. Try, if, it, if you can at all, focus on your main outcomes and make your conclusion on that. Um, if needed, refer to limitations of your work. So an example would be if there's a very high loss to follow up um, or something really bad happens in the study that <clears throat> compromises the results. Mention this because it might mean there's um, it's not a it's not a criticism of your study, but it might mean future research is needed. So that's, again, very helpful. The the title, uh, there is a certain word count on the title, but if 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 at all, Mention the population you're looking at and mention the study design, um, if possible. Include funding and conflicts of interest as well. If there's any significant con conflicts of interest or uh, someone funding this work, uh, do state it. I think um, one thing that has always helped me submit abstracts is 
you know, look at journals, pain journals in the field and look at their abstracts. So for example, the European Journal of Pain, you could look at, you know, the recent issue or an issue before that and look at the type of study that you're planning to submit maybe for abstract and maybe look at what successful abstracts look like already and how do they present the, the, the study. And next we have a slide on things to avoid and the things to avoid are obviously opposite to the top tips, but the first one would be, I guess, a title that is unreadable or in some way not understandable. So we, it's hard to know from the title what you're planning to investigate. Spelling and grammar mistakes, um, you know, we, um, these are these are common things that can happen to anyone, but I guess making sure that maybe you get a peer to pre a proofread the abstract or read it a number of times so it's um, it's uh, uh, correct from a grammar and spelling perspective. If you're using figures or tables, a figure or table is excellent, of course, to use because it you know it's nice to have a visual display of the results or even the methods. But make sure it's um, uploaded in the right way. Some images can or or transformed in the right way. If you're creating a picture from Word or PDF, just to ensure it comes out correctly and the tables that they're not blurry and so on. Results without numbers. So I mentioned that in the in the top tips. So if you don't give numbers, um, it's very very hard to then understand what your results mean you know, uh, in terms of um, if you found, found a small, medium, large association between X and Y or how effective your treatment is, you know, we really need uh, numerical uh, quantitative data to understand that. Uh, poorly described methods, as I said <clears throat> earlier, the methods are the most important part of the abstract because they tell us and your reader how good this study is and how much we can believe your results. So really, really uh, focusing on explaining the methods. And the best way to do that sometimes is using, in, in my area, is the PICO strategy. So mentioning the population, the intervention or exposure, comparison and outcomes, and also the method of, method of analysis. But again, from reading other abstracts, uh, like the European Journal of Pain, uh, looking at their journal, you'll get a, a feel for what a good description of methods means. Overstatement and conclusions, again, just avoiding the temptation to try and over impress or over exaggerate what your study means. Um, it can sound good at the time, but we're just as happy for you to kind of just state the result as it is. And yes, yeah, submitting an abstract, then finally, submitting an abstract without consent of your authors or your supervisors. So again, it's um, very important to tell your team that you're submitting an abstract and of course, by having them all involved, then you can get them to check your spelling and grammar mistakes as well. So it's great. So they're my top tips and uh, what to avoid. So that's all from me. Okay, so we're at the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions for me or Laurian, please um, ask them now or put them in the chat. And thank you again, Mary, for, for this insight, because there's a lot of um, people that are newcomers uh, into Congress and they need to, to have this information. So I, I saw um, a hand raised, so we cannot open the voice, but you okay. can write directly into the chat or, you, or into the uh, Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom page. So how many words does a figure take up? Is it the same as the number of words in it? So actually the figures are included into the total amount of words. And that's why we suggest um, into our work, into the um, EFIC web page, that you use a word out as the total number of words, including your figures. And I'm just linking our attendees to the European Journal of Pain as well, for people that might not know it for the current issue, if they want, just want to read through examples of abstracts. And so now we have also another question that maybe you can help uh, with, Mary. What about uh, qualitative science? Is that something we would be interesting at EPIC? 
absolutely yeah of course that's um that's brilliant and i think more and more it's more important to see qualitative research as well as quantitative yeah um the uh, the the results of course will be presented uh, differently for qualitative uh, research as in you know you might not have as many numbers and, and you won't have percentages and p-values and all that kind of stuff but yeah i give us a nice uh, you, you know again explain your method of qualitative analysis mm -hmm. and you can present the teams even because we had a question on twitter recently somebody wanted to submit qualitative work and they asked could they submit you know it was a nice uh, diagram presenting the team so you can present it in you know um as creatively as you want but yeah uh, qualitative research definitely and another question uh, that was is there more than one deadline for the post abstract submission so usually we have two we have a regular and an extended uh, deadline of course the extended deadline also depends on the number of abstracts we receive so for now, we do highly recommend you that you focus on the first deadline because it's not always certain that we have a second one. Okay, and, um, okay another question from Buda uh, Shukler. Um, new technique in regional anesthesia acceptable to be published? Um, I would think so. Uh, we do have a policy about um, abstract with um, research that has not been published yet. Because of course, when you uh, present a poster at um, a Congress, uh, we usually expect new, uh, newly uh, new discovery. And that's why usually we ask people that, you know, to present research that has not been published already. Otherwise, um, original anesthesia seems perfectly fine for uh, ethic, we do have a topic on anesthesia. Uh, as we indicated, review uh, review carefully the topics and the subtopics that will help you to know what kind of uh, research ethic is expecting and what is covered. Of course, you can always try out and send something that you think is not yet indicated. And then the, the scientific program committee will decide on if it's suitable for the Congress or not. I just to follow up with one thing on that. So hi, Muda, you just brought to my attention there one thing that um, ensure the study, whatever study, in this instance, something on regional anesthesia, make sure you have ethical approval, obviously. Um, you know, any study that's been submitted for, you know, any time you do research, there's ethical approval required. So that would be the only instance, I guess, where something like that wouldn't be um, accepted maybe is if it was unclear that there was no ethical approval sought. Um, but other than that, there's no, there's no issue. And uh, there's another question, which is what is the difference between abstract and poster abstract? So I know it can be confusing because usually when you think abstract, if the abstract of uh, an article is scientific article, it's actually quite similar to a poster abstract. Uh, maybe Marie, you want to uh, develop on that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I think I think depending on the conference you're going to, some people refer to abstract as abstract only if they're applying to present an, an oral presentation. Mm -hmm. But um, and then other people um, they divide them into oral abstracts and poster abstracts. I don't think there is any in this instance. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any difference. And the last question, which uh, would you consider a case theory under the clinical category? So for new subcategory, that is something that can be suggested, but that would be for the next Congress and for the next uh, scientific program committee. If you think that um, we would need to extend more the topics, you can of course send us an email with your suggestion and we will uh, take them into consideration for the next Congress. I'll follow up on that as well. Hi, Mark. So for the case series i guess you might be referring to a study where you've maybe looked at the effectiveness of an intervention or something with a number of uh, patients you uh, just ensure to state up front in your title that it's a case series but there's nothing wrong with using uh using that method uh, so that's absolutely fine
So I don't know if there's any other question, please uh, put them below. And I see in the discussion, we have asked something. The link that you put up, super. Oh yeah, I just put a link to the current issue of the European Journal of Pain because it can give maybe people that don't have a lot of confidence maybe uh, submitting abstracts. It can be good to just look at what an abstract is like because it's very like uh, the abstract that ends up published in the journal when you submit for a peer review publication. So you could just read some recent issues on whatever research you're interested in, qualitative, quantitative trials and so on. And that will give you a good um, flavor of how much detail to include. Super. I guess the other thing, if um, if there's no other questions, they're all very helpful questions for people listening in. But um, also Twitter, you know, if you have issues about an abstract or if you have some questions, I know people have asked on Twitter before, and we'll try and answer via um, Twitter as well if people have some questions. Yes, don't hesitate to send us uh, email or Twitter, or we are quite, you know, reachable, and we are always happy to answer your questions. Yep. And um, if there is no other question, I think we can close the webinar. And um, and thank you all for being there. And uh, good luck to you all for your abstracts. And uh, see you soon at the congress. And thank you all again. Oh, we have a last question. Wait, we have a question. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to read it out loud because maybe people are doing that part. Uh, for the indication to report the ethical approval, is the clinical trial registration number enough to implicitly say the study was approved? Yes, that would be excellent. Yeah, if you if you can put that in, um, that would be great. And that usually features in mm -hmm. in the abstract. So yeah, if if it's a trial, do please try and then include. Um, the registration number or for anything if you have a systematic review trial and if you have done any prospective registration and if you have space that would be great yeah put it in at the end and then exactly you don't have to go on about ethical approval that's that's enough and that's a sign of you know a very good study if it's prospectively registered yes and of course if you have any question when you are actually submitting and there are some part of the form that you misunderstand or are, or are not sure how to answer don't hesitate to send us an email and we will help you out. You can actually start your abstract submission and leave it open. As long as you don't submit, it's not saved, but it's not submitted yet. So you can already go to our website and start your, um, your abstracts. And even if you're to start to fill it up and look at the different um, items that you need to fill out. And uh, of course, usually when we get close to the deadline, we do send an email to everybody that still has an abstract in draft to ask them to complete. So if you are afraid that you are going to um, start it out and forgot, do not worry because we do remind you. So feel free to start already your abstract and to complete it when you have the uh, necessary information. Any last minute question? Okay, it seems that it's okay now. Otherwise, once again, don't hesitate. We are quite reachable and always happy to work. And have a nice uh, evening, everybody. Yeah, and thank you for the questions. They will be very helpful for anybody listening. Bye. Okay, best of luck. Bye, everybody. <laughs>